a turning point for that entrepreneur show as we are well into three and a half years recording. I'm teaming up with good friend Carlos Garcia, a staple here in the Tampa community to keep this show fresh, bring on another co-host for a bunch of episodes with a bit of a different spin on the way the episodes are run. If you've listened to the show over the last few years, we've had founders of companies and brands from all around the world stop by each week to share their journey, their tips for success. But with Carlos, we're diving into a different area of entrepreneurship. Carlos, thank you for joining me on this podcast. Wonderful to be here, Vince. Listen, it's a dangerous thing when you bring a a clinical psychologist onto a podcast, okay? Um, So, yeah, buddy, thank you. I'm so happy to uh, be co-hosting with you. Um, I'm a big fan of yours, a big fan of the show. Um, I've been on a couple of times, but um, as as a listener and an audience member, uh, you you have this uh, really uncanny ability to bring some guests on and really get to some of the, the deeper questions, right? And so, um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for this this sort of uh, relaunch of the Entrepreneur Show. And um, we're going to really uh, bring on some exciting guests. Uh, we plan on having some really deep conversations. I think sort of what you and I talked about is how do we make this more raw? How do we make this more, ga- more organic, a little bit more sincere um, in our approach so that we can – um, you know, yeah, we can we can have a podcast where we just talk to people about how successful they've been. And I think that's great. It's motivating. Uh, but how about we bring on folks and talk about how hard things get sometimes on this entrepreneurial journey? We're going to look into each entrepreneur's journey a bit deeper. And we're getting ready in a bit to bring on our first guest. We talked about bringing on great guests, those with great stories to share, a lot of learning lessons, lessons learned, excuse yeah, me. Yeah. And just an overall passion to give back through their experiences. I met today's guest back in graduate school. At that time, he was my marketing 600 and something professor. Now he's getting ready to launch his new endeavor, something he's been working on behind the scenes quite a bit. I'm proud of him because a lot of work's got into it. Carlos, I think we have a good pick for our first episode. We definitely do. And before we bring him on, I want to sort of speak a little bit to the shift that we're seeing. I don't know if, if you've noticed... Um, right, but there's a, a a real movement in the um, in the sort of uh, job market, right? There's a real shift. I think the pandemic was a part of it. I think people, right, the, the days of working for an organization for 15, 20 years is, is I think, in the past, right? Um, there's a lot more people with some great ideas, great business ideas, uh, a lot of creativity who want to work for themselves now, right? There's something about that freedom. There's something about uh, being able to, um, uh, you know, be financially sort of have, have that financial freedom. Um, and that idea of being stuck to a desk working for a company for 15, 20 years um, is, is, is seems to be getting a little bit outdated. And so now what we're seeing, I mean, anytime you're on social media, at least what comes across my feeds, right? Do you want to become an entrepreneur? Do you want to write a book, right? Do you want to get out there? You want to start a side hustle? Um, and and I think one of the things that I uh, speak to a lot of clients about, they start to get overwhelmed. Yes. They start to get overwhelmed because where do I start? Um, you know, do I have it in me? Um, you know, what does it need to look like? Do you do you gather some of that as well? I couldn't agree with you more, especially starting the beginning where COVID, it kind of changed everything that in the office experience isn't satisfying to many people anymore. They had a taste of working remote. Being an entrepreneur, you can do just that, but it is not always sunshine. And I say this a lot, the Bezos, the Elon Musks, those are the rare entrepreneurs that are living that lifestyle behind the scenes. There's a lot of hard work going on. One of the reasons we're bringing on this show, Carlos, it's not easy. No, it's not. It's not. I, I you know, I, I, in a lot of the talks I do in the community, um, what I have found is that when I speak to how hard it is, when I speak to the struggle, um, that's how, that's when people really relate, right? I, I, I think we're, uh, sort of over um, the, the the sort of coaches or the speakers that come on and just tell you about, you know, the, the beautiful success of entrepreneurship. And, I, I you know, it's there and it's great. And I think that's a part of it. Um, but I, I really love talking about the, the grind, the hustle of it, the, the, the challenges of it. Um, and, you know, one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about today, Vince, is 
um, the ways in which, uh, you know, I was laying in bed last night and I'm just sort of scrolling through Instagram, right? And everybody's got a package. Everyone's got a technique. Everyone's got a workshop that they want to sell you. And it just feels like there's got to be a different way, right? Like, like I, I don't know. Like, I, I think I'm, I, I get exhausted of watching the same kind of stuff just coming through, right? It, it doesn't feel, um, it doesn't feel authentic. What, what are your thoughts on that? I'm with you. It's something I wouldn't say struggle with weakness is selling myself enough because I don't like to be that guy that I see <laughs> right, on the feeds right, that I want to right. scroll right past. Yeah. Nothing like word of mouth, nothing like getting our message yeah. out there organically. It is the hardest to get that word of mouth satisfaction. But yeah. with podcasts, I try to bring on our guests, not only to create more awareness for what they do, but inspire people who are listening on trying to come over those hurdles right in the beginning. Getting more awareness for the great work these entrepreneurs do, it is an honor for me because I get to meet so many great people. Yeah. Now we're going to be doing it together. But rather than selling, 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 just sharing what you have to offer and letting people come to you. Beautiful. I love that. It's easier said than done, of course. I mean, there's totally. so many people doing similar things. How are you going to stick out? I mean, you, along with our great guest today, we've been working behind the scenes, supporting each other for the last yeah. month or so, two months, trying to find ways to move the needle for each other because with so many people looking the same. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to just keep brainstorming together. Everyone out there challenged for you to get networking today. As soon as this episode is over, go out there, meet one new person. If you're in a coffee shop, you're going grocery shopping, say hello to someone, have a conversation because you never know what's going to come out of it. Love that piece of advice. Vince, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's not keep the audience waiting anymore on this guest that we've brought in. Um, Dr. Shane Smith, uh, the nice guy entrepreneur, uh, Please tell the audience a little bit about um, yourself, a little bit about your story, and um, what is this, uh, this, this new journey you started, The Nice Guy Entrepreneur. Tell us about that. I'm excited to hear about this. Yes. Uh, first, you know, it's a, p- a pleasure and a privilege to be on here. Um, I've been listening for quite a while, and I think this new dyna- dynamism between the two of you is just a natural fit. So uh, kudos to you both. And um, who am I? The nice guy entrepreneur, <laughs> right? Um, so the nice guy entrepreneur stems from my own life. Uh, I knew I always wanted to work in entrepreneurship, but everybody I tried to model myself after, those that were in the limelight, portrayed in movies and television shows, uh, reading their biographies, listening to podcasts. I knew my true self wasn't within them and who they were was not within me. And I felt disconnected. Like maybe I don't have this so-called magical gene of entrepreneurship yeah. that maybe it, maybe I can't do it. And I've even read articles, uh, not scientifically proven articles, by the way, <laughs> but articles that said that there is an entrepreneurship gene, right? Oh, yeah. and, and they didn't mean it literally, but they meant like you had to be a certain personality right. to make it as an entrepreneur. And I believe that for many years. I grew up in a culture. Uh, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> I'm, I'm well into my 50s now. And I grew up in a culture where... Uh, either you owned a small business or you worked for a big corporation. And my, my idols were those uh, working in big corporations. My, my high school um, a superlative that a classmate wrote for me was that I was going to be the president of IBM. And, that, and I kind of aspired towards that. Uh, that, did, that didn't work out, not, but not for me not wanting it. Yeah. Uh, and I fell back to small business. And... You know, it wasn't it wasn't great for my pride at the time because I wanted to achieve uh, Michael J. Fox, for those old enough to know and follow him um, through his career, was a great avatar for what I wanted back then, you know, to work for big business, uh, like from Family Ties to to his movie Secret of My Success, Mailroom to C-Suite, right? Uh, That didn't happen. And I fell back to my 
my culture of people, uh, pe- the Pennsylvania Dutch, where every township, you needed the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick mm-hmm. maker. And so everybody owned small businesses. Yeah. And I didn't want that, right? I wanted to make it. I wanted to break out. Um, you know, flash uh, uh, flash forward, you know, years after working in, in small business, uh, I went and became an academic. And I started teaching entrepreneurship. It's the new buzz in academia now to have entrepreneurship centers in every university. And I started to realize that there's a lot of different types of entrepreneurs out there. Mm-hmm. And in the university, there are students saying, I wanna, I wanna open up my own business. I wanna be an entrepreneur. Give me an idea, right? And so they were a hammer looking for nails. Right. And then I was finding a lot of students that were, you know, I, I'm not that way, but my family has a background in this. Can I start my own business, even though I don't have experience, but I have an interest and know-how because of my family, can I start a business mm-hmm. and do something similar? And I said, well, those are the people, right? And then I would work with existing entrepreneurs and those what I call entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, that were adults. And I started to realize that there were a lot of me out there. People that want it, but were not taking action of it. And I wow. studied that. And I found that a lot of us entrepreneurs had everything, even more than many other entrepreneurs, wow. but were not taking action. And, and so that's what the nice guy entrepreneur is. It's focusing on that entrepreneur that has everything they need. Mm. But perhaps that level of confidence, that level of comfort to step out onto the field to play the game. Yeah, beautiful. Um, Yeah, we were just talking about that a minute ago. So, um, Shane, you've been around um, so many entrepreneurs in the work that you've done, teaching them, just sort of guiding them. Um, Let's talk about that confidence piece, right? Because I wonder if there's listeners out there who've had this dream, right, who have had this um, this idea for or a vision for a product or a company and just haven't executed on it yet. You know, it, it's, it's, it's hard, right? It's, it's, it, you know, our confidence gets in the way sometimes, right? That little inner critic yeah. voice. Um, what's your experience of that as you've guided other entrepreneurs, but maybe for yourself as well, if you wouldn't mind sharing that? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's more common than we think, right? Yeah. The people that we see out there, there is no overnight success, mm-hmm. or very few of them. We just assume they're yes. overnight yeah. successes. That's what it looks like on yeah. social media, right? Yeah. Exactly. And I like to say, I never had a lemonade stand, right? We hear these podcasts saying, you know, I always knew I was going to be an entrepreneur because when I was eight years old, I would buy erasers in bulk <laughs> and sell them to my classmates for right. a profit. Right. And that's how I knew I was going to be an entrepreneur. Not every one of us yeah. was like that. Yeah. But yet so many of us are entrepreneurs and successful entrepreneurs that weren't like that. We're human beings. We evolve and change throughout our lives. And we may not have grown up in the household that made that possible or even a thought in our head at that time. So who you are now is not who you were then. So don't compare yourself to those others back then. But another thing about the confidence, Carlos, is we have our support group. We grow up in a support group and we turn to these same individuals uh, because they love us. They want to be around us. Our significant others, our, our, our parents, our children, our best friends, we turn to them constantly when we have hardships in life. But one thing happens when we, when we say, hey, I want to start a business and you've been working in the career for, field for a decade or yeah, more yeah. and you say, hey, hun." I'm thinking about quitting my job and starting a business and becoming an entrepreneur. Um, no. Right, right. The things <laughs> um, you hear, right? Hunt, don't, don't forget we have a mortgage. Yeah. We have mouths to feed. We have college. We have braces. We have all these other things. No. Um, we need you in, the, in this other game right yeah. here. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. You're a great manager for the team, mm-hmm. but let's not have you lead it, right? Um, and so... We sense that. We sense that even before we ask that question. Yeah. And totally. you can imagine what that does for your confidence of right. believing in yourself. Because if we ask them, they're going to say that. And and we know we they're going to say that even before we ask. So we don't even ask sometimes. Yeah. And so we tell ourselves that, no, maybe not now. 
Absolutely. But, but the yeah. proof is in the pudding that mm -hmm. the older we get, the more life experience we have, the more wisdom, more expertise we have in a certain area that can not only help individuals, businesses, nonprofits, etc. We have something to share. And it should be shared. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And I, we touched the little itty bitty committee is how I refer to that. It's <laughs> always in our head, always there. But you also, like you said before, the fears. Some of yeah. the fears in entrepreneurship are just those others limitations. They do get in our heads as much as we don't want them to. Will we make it the sure paycheck with responsibilities? You're saying braces, kids. Now you're giving up that salary. Believing in ourselves is half the game but it doesn't automatically produce revenue. Right. The overnight success is very few. As you said, it's a quarrel in your head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. one of the things that I talk um, a lot about in um, uh, my presentation, the, the psychology of being an entrepreneur is, um, you know, it can feel like it's a lonely road at times, right? And there's not a lot of other places where, you know, um, the community's there, but oftentimes we spend that time in our head thinking, you know, can I do this? Will I be able to do this? Mm -hmm. And you're right, uh, Shane, when you don't sense that support from others around you, like when, when you've developed this vision for where you want to see your life go and you feel alone in that vision or feel that self-doubt and people aren't showing up to say, yeah, I'm behind you 100% of the way. Um, that that can that can sort of get into your self esteem. It can get into that place of confidence, right? Um, what are a couple things that you would recommend to audience members who are listening in, um, who are struggling with that confidence piece to sort of get up, get out there, and do what 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 you know they're they're sort of dreaming to do? I like that question. Yeah, absolutely, and it's so critical. And you're so right. It is a it's a lonely world. Yeah. Uh, we already talked about the friends and family piece, and 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 how scary it is to ask for their support. Um, the biggest point of, of recommendation is just get out there and be in a community. And there are more communities out there than you realize. There are uh, things that your city, your county, and your state are doing already that have weekly meetups. Uh, there are organizations that, like Clockwork, will be there, uh, a group of 20, 30, 40 people like you meeting for a coffee in the morning or a, a, a dinner meeting at night. They're all around you. You just have to find your sources. The worst thing you can do though, uh, well, first off, it might not be easy for all of us to quit your day job to start your business, sure, right? Sure. Uh, I, I, in most cases, a side hustle yeah, and, and yeah. doing it at, almost in the mindset of a hobby so there's less pressure on you. Uh, to Even to the point of giving it away for free at first just to build up that confidence is wow. not a bad idea um, while you keep your day job. And then yeah. and then sometimes that, that stepping onto the field, that first step was the hardest and then you look back and that second, third step each step got easier. Mm -hmm. So do what it takes just to get started. Yeah. But get out, get out of your bedroom. Get out of that, that small rental office. Uh, get out of that cubicle, wherever you are. Get out of there and be around others like yourself. And that could be in person. That could be virtual. But be around others like yourself. And that, that goes back to the, the, the saying that uh, Jim Rohn said it, I, th I think, first. You are the average of the five mm -hmm. people you surround yourself with yes. the most. Yeah. And what that means is if you're still with your old cronies <laughs> that haven't done much and you want to do right. more, well, you, you might have to step out and meet some new people mm -hmm. and, and go into those community events that we were talking about. And you don't have to be around instant millionaires and you'll be an instant millionaire. Find that next step. Yeah. Someone, someone that's just starting like yourself or maybe somewhat new and you're all learning this together i found you, we all heard the cliche you know the the carrot or the stick uh mm -hmm. is what motivates you what motivates you to, right. the carrot being you'll be a millionaire one day if you if you start right. or hey if you don't start you know how are your kids gonna eat right yeah. <laughs> um i found neither of those work for me mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm not motivated by the big dream because I'm comfortable right now. Right. I'm not motivated by the negativity and the fear because that's never motivated me. I'm a positive person. Feed off of that energy. But what I found is something. You walk alongside of me. 
that's what motivates me. Love so that. someone that we're going to in on the same path, maybe for different reasons, yeah, sure. but if we walk together, you can I can move that cart. Yeah, yeah. I, I can hear um, in the way you respond to some of these questions and just you know the way that you talk that community is really important for yeah. you, Dr. Shane. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, one beautiful thing in the entrepreneurship world uh, that should be more prominent. And I think we used to think all about competition, right? We used to think that uh, I need to compete against my competition, right? Yeah. Those words yeah. go hand in hand. Um, Simon Sinek is, has a book out, uh, also a, a, a TED Talk as well, but called The Infinite Game. Mm. And entrepreneurship should not be thought of as a finite game. A right. finite game yeah. has a score at the end and yeah. someone wins and someone loses. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that way, nor should it. If you are playing a finite game, you will lose more times than you win. Mm -hmm. And that's difficult to wake up every morning to do that. Plus, guess what? When you're looking at the score and you're looking at your competition, you're losing sight of your customer, yeah. your tribe, your Beautiful. own community. Yeah. But if you play the infinite game where you're playing a game that is just fun to be there every day because you are serving, yeah. you are serving the individual, you're serving the people that your nonprofit is helping, you're serving a, a business community, you're serving your just flat out community. Mm -hmm. When you're serving and you're enjoying that every day, that's the fuel that will carry you day after day to success. Uh, there is a difference in my mind between passion and purpose. Mm -hmm. Passion is Same an energy, yeah. but if you're serving your community and are part of that community, that gives you purpose. And purpose constantly fuels the passion part. If you're only focused on competition and money, the passion for money is short-lived. And it's hard to refill your tank every day with that passion. But if you have a purpose, it's an endless supply of fuel for that passion. Dr. Shane, that, that's amazing, man. This, this is why I love this show. Um, yeah, God, I, I just I, I, I feel like I just want to sit back and digest that. That, that was really beautifully said. Um, Wow, I'm, I'm speechless. Yeah, I mean, you, you've touched on community a whole lot this episode. For those in our community here in St. Pete, Tampa Bay area, there's a lot of community resources. Why don't we shout out a few of those resources Beautiful. for anyone out there who is looking to take that next step? And then I want to find out more about how our listeners can get in touch with you. They may be in that entrepreneur phase, trying to get out there. I know One Million Cups, that's where I started out. One Million Cups is a nationwide organization where you pitch your idea, your topic to community members and they give you feedback on how to succeed. I know St. Pete Thrives. You want to share some more? Yeah, uh, those are two great ones. Uh, another great one, if you're like the solopreneur, like many of us are, uh, or have a small team, is a group over, again, in St. Pete called uh, Social, Social Entrepreneurs Club. They meet every Thursday night, uh, uh, just do a round table, and then they go out to dinner. A smaller group goes out to dinner afterwards. Uh, again, it's around that community, but you're sharing, you're sharing ideas and you're passing ideas through others like you, although they're doing different things. But that's what we all realize is no matter what business we're in, we're all still entrepreneurs, yeah, right? Yeah. And we, yeah. we, know, we know each other's problems better than our significant other at home does mm -hmm. about our work. Mm -hmm. So again, Norton, let me just put this in mind. Again, talking about lonely world of an entrepreneur, yeah. your significant other will start rolling their eyes and tuning you out yep. every time <laughs> you come home with excitement or right. fear right. or concerns. Yeah. So find your tribe. And share with them because they're the ones that are going to clap for you, pat you on the back, or console you when you need it. So, But yeah, uh, so it's Entrepreneur Club. There's Tampa Bay Masterminds, which is uh, maybe a little bit more tech-focused. Mm -hmm. um, there, there is a lot of uh, federally funded and county and municipally funded organizations out there that, that just getting the know-how helps. Uh, so look and turn towards those. In Tampa, we have the Entre uh, Entrepreneur Collaborative Center, which houses that One Million Cups. That yes, shout mentioned. out to ECC, the yeah. NLAV. Carlos and I have our presentations that go on a few times per month over there. 
Yeah, those are um, great, great place, great resources, great classes and presentations, all for free. Um, it's uh, funded by um, Hillsborough County. Uh, I, I was impressed that they they deliver so much value for for you mm-hmm. know entrepreneurs in in this area. Yeah. Well, speaking of value for entrepreneurs, where can we find this value that Shane's been bringing to the Absolutely. show? He's getting ready to launch. I know. Yeah. What can we expect? Yeah. So. Uh, the nice guy entrepreneur, by the way, that's, that's not who I call myself. That's who, who this community is for, okay. right? I just want that to be clear. Um, uh, it doesn't mean that you have to be nice to be a part of the community, but I will kick you out if you're not. If you're not. <laughs> and it doesn't, <laughs> and it doesn't mean that those already succeeding in entrepreneurship are not nice. It's just an easy way for us to say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little timid about this. Yep. I'm an, I'm an introvert. Uh, I'm not a type A personality. I'll, okay, I'll just say I'm a nice guy. It's a lot easier on myself, <laughs> right? Um, and so, yeah, the, the nice guy community is is a collaborative support and guidance to help hold your hand and walk alongside of you of people just like yourself, but it's going to be virtual. Um, uh, so anywhere around the world, uh, and, and we're going to be looking to, to have weekly calls so you can chime in and, and ask questions and hear others with their problems just so you're not alone. Yeah. And the easiest way to, to find us is at niceguy.biz. Um, just, I didn't have the nice guy entrepreneur anymore because there's too many typos there. So <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, I learned that even with that entrepreneur show, people said we can't find your show. So just double check how you're, you're just write it. entrepreneur correctly. You'll <laughs> most yeah. have the autocorrect next to it now. Um, but I, I like that, uh, Shane. It's been a lights out first come uh, collaborative episode. I think. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to start your week with us. Here we are as we're recording. A big thank you to Carlos for coming on board with me on that entrepreneur show. The show can only go up from here. If you've enjoyed it so far, they're just going to get a whole lot better. Shane, I'm sure we'll be back on the show at some point to um, update the world. Now that he's a part of the community, I like to bring guests back. That way they can update the community on all the new things they're doing. Someone as ambitious as you, I know there's still the best is yet to come with you. So thank you again. Yeah, thanks for being here, Shane. I want to give one last shout out to where we're um, recording today's yes. podcast, which is at Crest Community, another beautiful resource in the Tampa area, co-working space, uh, just a really beautiful space uh, for entrepreneurs that are looking to to rise and grind. Yeah, I mean, the studio is great. Definitely yeah. a pleasant surprise this morning coming yeah. in, yeah. having uh, the works waiting for us right here. And with that... I think we're signing off. We're signing off. Here in Tampa, Florida. Gentlemen, let's have a week. Beautiful.